But we are moving on to Magman and the Sponge on Wanderlust, which... Wait. Oh, did I forget to... Okay, there we go. Exiting the game. Wait, what? Okay. So we are moving on to Wanderlust. That will be a map I am very happy to see because I love that map. Yeah, that they we're on to the Sponge and Magman, who actually started without me. I apologize. I kept my other instance of the game running. So yeah, Magman going for Jumbot Factory, while the Sponge goes for the Cloaky Bot Factory. The Sponge going for Wow, hyper aggressive five glaze right off the bat before the first worker, and Magman going for puppies. Good call, Magman. Though admittedly not enough puppies, but with the commander there, I think that should block off the glaives. Five glaives, yeah, that that should do the trick. More puppies being built, or no, Freakers getting built instead. Oh no, the sponge unfortunately moving two of the glaives forward too quickly. That pyre, oh those puppies are gonna take out, yeah, two glaives. The remaining three are going to have a slightly tricky time getting in. Magman's Commander Hover is upgraded with a beam laser. That's an LLT right there in the center of the map. Or center of the base. It's, it's really good to um, uh, trade well with puppies. You do make cost. But puppies will only ever trade so well. Even though you're making cost, you're only making a small amount. You never sort of, you don't, don't get the sort of advantage of having a large force of them. So um, it, it's, it's good in this matchup though. Because um, glaives, they do trade bad against puppies, so it, it is good to continue to build them. While I mean, the sponge right now, um, is just he's going to transition. The sponge is going to transition at some point into uh, Zeus's, and then Magnus and that's pirates are going to be yeah almost redundant. And the thing is, even then, only two glaze were lost. The remaining three are still around. They're still up front. Not let put much pressure on Magman at this point, but it still gave the sponge that level of influence. And now that pyro coming in is not going to do much. It'll kill a couple glaze, and then it should go down. Yeah, getting the glaive positioning. Those glaze going to nice. Oh, beautiful surround on that pyro. No, or one glaive goes down for burn damage, and that's it. The rest of them should survive. I think this one here might die. It's gonna die. Yeah, it's gonna die. There's that's that's the two. As the lower elo player picking um, picking, picking a factory like jump bots, which requires a huge amount of micro, your pyros need perfect positioning. You need to keep them alive. You need to jump them constantly. You need to, you know, if you can, you can do line splash. You can shoot through buildings. You can shoot through uh, terrain. You can shoot through uh, corpses and things. So you know, there's very high reward for for micro. It's not the best thing for a player. Um, who is lower elo to play against a player who is higher elo as a sort of trump card to try and beat them well, unless think, you're going for some sort of rush like a jack rush or something well, cheesy i think that's what well i think i should have done but i think magman was probably planning on going for you know what i don't know because those early puppies kind of destroy any hypothesis that it might have been a pyro rush or some other similar all-in because those early puppies were kind of set for defense I mean, they ran to the glaives, but what else are you going to do with them? Kill a mechs? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's it's sort of standard to um to scout initially with oh, puppies. It's standard. And they did a lot of damage. To, I'm not to arguing the, that it's standard. That. I'm arguing that standard is the wrong sort of play. If you're going to go for jump bots, especially as a lower elo player, you're going for something a bit more aggressive. You're not going for standard play. Standard play is going to be you're going to be going for shields or cloakies probably on this map, and you're not going to be going for a jump bots. You're not going to be going for Unless you're, unless you're being really careful about it, but yeah, in this situation, I couldn't see that being used for standard play for any sort of advantage. Yeah, one of the problems is that um versus the, the cloak bot uh, match specifically, we've seen a lot of cloak, but we haven't seen any, any shield bot. We've seen a lot of cloak and hovers this game, uh, this match, and actually a lot of um uh, pyros. And I think this is the style of the players. You have players which favor some factories over others. Yeah, uh, shield bot factory is something that I think, I think could have been handy on Badlands, but honestly, it's just. I'm kind of surprised that no one is playing it because shield bots are quite strong. I mean, the thug law balls are as strong as ever. And admittedly, against Cloaky, there is kind of the obvious counter of Sniper. But even then, I mean, it's not a perfect counter. It's just it gets rid of the Felon, but you still have pure thug law that's difficult to deal with. It costs more than the Felon, too. So Yeah. And, and it costs energy upkeep, which is can be quite significant. Uh, trying to go in for a uh, uh, laser turret bad. snipe. And you can see that not one Pyro can actually snipe a laser turret in the middle of the map here. 
if it jumps into it and if it targets the well. So, I mean, you can see how, how it's roared by Micro, but the, the Pyro still just went down and then the uh, laser tower burnt fr from, uh, from, imp from uh, fire damage. I'm um, trying yeah. to defend the middle of the map to defend his commander using this uh, this placeholder, which was actually really good. Yeah, that, that placeholder is going to help out. The thing is, overall, though, Magman is being pushed. A, there's a lot of pressure on Magman. They are expanding nicely, though. They're actually taking. Well, he's they're ca taking he's the captured map. the commander in a um, placeholder thing, which actually means the commander will fall down the hill. <laughs> uh, he didn't nice. take any damage from so he's all right. No, but and still, that yeah, doesn't mean the Lotus is His own commander is going to get sniped. Magman's Yo. commander is. Yeah, yeah going down, down that goes. The placeholder goes down as well. That's a big. The placeholder is probably the bigger loss, honestly, at this stage in the game. I mean, right now, Magman and Sponge are at economic parity, but. The loss of that placeholder means that there's really not much that can be done for Magman to get any sort of positional advantage. And these Pyros, they can do something. They're going to go for another snipe on that laser. Yeah, they're going to go for the Lotus. Take it out, too. Actually, take it out with no loss. Take out the radar as well. Looks like they're going to try to go for the commander, but of course they have to wait for the jump to recharge. Uh, yeah, about to jump really in. And going now. For the is not a good idea. That, yeah, jumping no, the jumping away. Okay, that's a better. Yeah. Better option, but I thought Magman, given the way they've been playing before, that comm snipe would not have been a surprise whatsoever. Yeah, on a, on a jump commander, it's it's a bit easier, but it can jump away as well. So that's true. It has less hit points, but it's very easy to get out of a, a sticky situation. He has a lot of pyros now. He's building up sort of a critical mass of pyros, which could go very well considering that um, uh, not Sponge just lost yet. all of his glaives in the commander snipe. And so no this could work. There's no Zeus. Yeah. Although, uh, yeah, you're going to see Sponge is going to jump away from here. Oh, right now, he Sponge is going to jump, jump away. There we go. Yeah. That's, that is unfortunate, primarily because the thing is, as you mentioned about the jumping, the Pyros, if they walk in and the Sponge commander jumps away, they can jump after it. And the conflict yeah. continues. But jumping in isn't going to work. So that's it's just, just poor. He did a point jump, which is you should always line move your jumps. Pyros, they shoot through each other, they do damage to each other when they shoot through each other. If, you know, they, they do that, they take a lot of, they don't have so much hit points, so any sort of AoE damage that they take is, is, is amplified. They explode with a small death explosion, which means they chain explode each other. Yeah. So just jumping them all on one spot, it's just a death sentence. Honestly, jump them in a line, jump them in an arc, jump them to spread. Move. Point move is a death sentence. Period. Yeah. He's doing it again, this, this point jump. But it's like, I don't know if, I don't think Magman's aware of that friendly fire. I mean, that's a bit esoteric. I don't think a lot of people are aware that Pyros deal friendly fire damage. Because they don't, they don't burn. Like, they don't remain yeah, on they fire. They don't take the burn damage, so they take less damage from friendly fire because they don't set on fire. But they still do take damage if, they, if they're all on top of each other. They just actually, can't, like, tag each other with a straight, a straight shot and then continue to burn. He's actually in a really good position here when he's shooting through the hill. He actually can't see the guy on the other side, unfortunately, yeah. very well. But, um... What surprises me, though, yeah, that, is... That can work really well, but he doesn't have the vision for it. Yeah. What surprises me, though, is that Magman is Scuttle continuing... Magman's insisting on attacking along the south edge, which isn't really theirs, but they're taking a lot of the north territory. They could attack... They could sweep along the north. They could make this nice little arc along the north. They yeah. wouldn't have to worry about this south side. They wouldn't have to worry about breaking through this lotus. They wouldn't have to worry about suiciding a dozen pyros into this tiny little ridge. They could go Magman. along a different path. Magman has spent so much trying to snipe this commander that he's finally built a scuttle, which would work, but he doesn't have enough energy. And the sponge actually sees it. He sees the scuttle because it keeps decloaking because the scuttle no is incredibly left. energy hungry. And so, that's, yeah, that's uh, it bad. might work if he jumps it. it yeah, he's got. Yeah, actually, no, yeah, that, this no, will work. This is going to work. This goes. There we go. The sponge loses work? their commander. Not a bad kill. At least that gets rid of the build power up front. Won't kill the sponge by any means, but that will get the build power away, and Magman will at least stop focusing on that. Because they were getting tunnel vision once again, as I mentioned before. He spent, he spent just far too much economy on that. Yeah, that was... Let's see. That was very easily 4,000 medals spent. The sponge, the sponge actually is that. actually saying that he saw it. He, marked, uh, he put a mark on the map saying, I see you. He knew it was there, and he still lost to it. It doesn't matter, though. But, the glaives uh, are coming in. Go much counter -attack. coming attack. Coming the Puppies can counter the Glaives if he plays as well. Puppies can counter the Glaives. They can eat the enemy commander. They can eat his own commander. He's going to have a ton of Puppies, and he might be able to sweep out some of these defenses, which are very light on the defenses at the moment. That's true, and we do see that the Sponge has been relying heavily on their pressure and the fact that Magman is getting tunnel vision on the commander. The main the base is pretty is open. Man. Not sure how that's going to go, though. Looks like the Sponge, I think due to this pressure, Magman is still trying to set up. They're getting basically turning all those Pyros into Puppies. Trying to get rid of the glaives, but that's going to be tricky. In fact, I don't think it's going to be possible in time 
Krieger's trying to slow them down, but no, that's not going to do it at all. That, that factory is vulnerable to going down. And Magman throws in the towel. That is game. The puppies weren't in a position to stop that. They could have no. otherwise. And they're actually even good against the air. Switching to puppies there, in fact, doing it earlier, just having one puppy just sit on top of the commander. He was tunnel leveling so hard on the enemy commander that he didn't think to just stick one puppy, sit, 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 sit on top of his own commander. He'd have, you know, 10 puppies by the end of that. And then he can just, you know, use those. That, yeah, I don't know. But we're going to game two. I mean, there's still there's still a chance. Magman gets the choice of map, and then from there we'll figure out what's happening. But I do feel I feel a little bit bad about that because Magman, man, if, if it's not even just a matter of tunnel vision on the commander, because that wasn't a bad thing to go for. The commander was putting a lot of pressure. It was the direction. There was room to the north. Magman had control over the territory immediately north of where the commander that the sponge had was setting everything up. They could have just gone around that ridge. They could have walked around it and come from behind. Or, well, come from, yeah, behind compared to the sponge's position. They split the sponge's commander from their base, and at that point, the sponge would have no room to retreat. Like, their commander would mm. have been stuck. I'm really surprised that didn't happen. The, um, the new... With the... Having the commander there, it was a threat if the commander had have taken the reclaim from his... from uh, uh, Magmad's dead commander. If sponge, the sponge had have taken the reclaim from his dead commander. But other than, like, building that leg again over and over again in the hill, on the hill, he wasn't actually doing that much with it. He could have raged, raided with a lot of pyros around the side and been a lot more successful if yeah, he builds up thing. enough defenses in his own base or something like, you know, builds up a, a jack or whatever to ensure that the commander can't push into him. Okay, so we are now on Terra. I have never seen this map before. I'm sorry. I have... Oh, no, I have seen this map once, I think. So let's go over this, it, I guess. This is a flat map. This is a really low map water right there, but this water is not swimmable. And mass five and a half metal expansion right at the center. Four of them, actually. Massive centerpiece on that. Magman going for that right away, too. Sponge hasn't set yeah, up yet. Sponge this is a uh, very Comet Catcher type map, but it's a little more interesting in that you've got these... Um, these rivers and the major thing about the rivers is not so much that they slow you but that they're also dips they're sort of inclined so that they they, they slow you even more from that it's not just the water mm. and you've got these hills which um you can put bots on so it's a little more bot friendly it's a little more broken up but the other major thing about this map is those high value uh, metal extractors if you can get onto them and start overdriving them and you to be fair you don't want to start overdriving immediately what he's doing here is magman it's clever, is going for that it's good but if you start overdriving them immediately, what do you want to do is you want to take more metal extractors. You want to use your energy to build the, to make the metal from the metal extractors. You don't want to pour it into overdrive too early into the game. But it's a good idea to, to secure this. If you can secure and hold it over a long period of time, um, it will pay off later in the game. Yeah, but at this point, I don't think Magman has the forces to do that. Dark coming in here, they will be able to take it out by the daggers pretty quickly. But then the Scorchers are going to come in, and that's going to just... That is going to deal a lot of damage. Magmat's commander going up front has morphed to beam laser. It'll take about three or four scorchers to take it out, but three or four scorchers shouldn't be too hard for the sponge to build up at this point. Especially being that the sponge is not building anything else, also going for the center, also going for that center mechs. That five value mechs, that massive mechs right there. Seriously, these need more spec maps. Needs more specular maps. But anyway, <laughs> it does. It really it's does. An old, it's, yeah, it's, it's an older map, so yeah. It is, but, but still. Anyway, so yeah, Magman going for that overdrive, though, pretty heavily. To, uh, not quite heavily yet, but it's going to get there. It's four in energy so far. No extra energy yet. But once there is, that's going to be pretty big. The sponge is focusing more on um, expanding around the back. He's got a constructor already up, expanded, expanding south, while um, Magman's still finishing his constructor. It's only just building in the factory. Um, mm. So he's focusing more on taking territory and he is focusing on that extractor just because it's a high value one, not necessarily to overdrive it. But no, you can see that. he's thinking, of, he's put two lotus, it's like slapped down well, straight next to it. He wants thing. to defend it really heavily. It also happens to be in a choke point. It's a really good spot to sort of, you know, you take the middle, you defend back from it. This thing that we've seen, been seeing in all these sorts of games. Well, yeah, because Magman is going the nuts for the overdrive, though. He's way over building energy. Um, this could yeah. be fine. Because he has his constructor going out, taking four metal extractors around the um, uh, around the side, and so he can pour that energy into uh, into mass expansion. And since he knows he's going to want to defend this point later into the game, 
you can build all his energy here and build a lot of defenses on top of that energy and it can be secure. So it, it's, it's not too bad. He is focusing probably a little bit too much on overdrive yeah. right now, but it's it's not it's not disastrous. It's not no, something sort of where you it, know you... No, it's far from it. I mean, this is right now, this is eight metal coming in from a five metal or five and a half metal expansion. I mean, it's already worth basically three normal spots. And now it's worth four, thanks to the overdrive. It's not too much overdrive either. So really, I could see that. And yeah, the normal spots too. are only... They're 1.6. They're not even two on this map. So oh, wow, those yeah, metal, they are. metal extractors, they are important. And you can see that the sponge is actually starting the overdrive too. So this is a really interesting map where even though it's so open and there are so many metal extractors and you can take so much territory, players focus really, even really early on on overdriving a single metal extractor. Yeah, and there's, there's also the 2.5s in the hills for later on once the fives have been taken. But those are probably not going to be taken this game, I doubt it. Just given the way the players are playing, they're being very aggressive. I mean, it might it might come up if they end up stalemating, but I don't know. That seems unlikely. Yeah, it's also worth noting that, um, yeah, the um, oh, yeah, you, you have the 2.5s, but um, you also have these ones in the middle of the map because you have four of these um, big, big value ones. So that um, even though it's very easy to take this um, up front metal extractor and to overdrive it, Taking and securing the uh, ones in the low ground between these these sort of form avenues, where um, it's good to attack through, <laughs> because they, they they go they go and they sort of funnel you nicely towards the sides of the enemy's base rather than through the middle. But we have a mace mm. in the middle being taken out by um, squatches. Ah, uh, yeah, and there's not able to go much further though. Those lotuses were nicely placed, but still the sponge taking the metal far more heavily. Sorry, taking the middle far more heavily, getting the lotuses up. So the immediate middle is basically the sponges. The side expansions with the other five metal expansions, not so clearly. Especially being that Magman is pushing towards the eastern five metal expansion, while the sponge is more heavily going for the western one, and the sponge swinging around behind the five metal expansion, where there aren't any defense, or there's a couple lotuses, that's about it. So right now, Magman, and Magman trying to break that center, that's not going to work out too well, I don't think. There's, no, Magman wisely retreating from that. Yeah, it's good that he got fighting. he got knowledge of it, but he already had radar on it. He should know that if you know there's that many objects in the middle of the map, that many static objects, that it's the commander that's building them. Yeah, You're not going to advance that heavily into the middle of the map also, with them. Um, really strikers. important. Sorry, really important to point out though. The sponge knows about the expansion, knows about the five metal. That's on radar. If they see a dot on that metal extractor, there's only one thing it could be. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but that was really important. Yeah. No, that's probably why he sent the Scorchers in, which died to the mace. And that was, the mace actually made cost there, which was, uh, is not too bad. And, oh, you can see oh, that yeah. um, Magman is, he's obsessed with these high value metal extractors. He's building a caretaker on top of one of them. To, yeah, uh, to build a solar factor faster. Yeah. We're getting a Stardust first, but yes, Stardust probably. First, yeah. I'm a bit surprised I haven't gone for any pylons yet, actually. I couldn't think of it. Especially Magman. Yeah, it's, it's helpful really at this stage of the game to build your um build your energy where you need it i mean you can see that True. he doesn't have any energy structures in his base magman at all they're all on top of his metal extractor um and he knows that he wants to defend that point anyway so it's it's like having a second base and if you build a forward if thinking, it's in a forward position i was thinking fine. more sorry i was thinking more once those once the solars are done by this second high value the high, east high value they're going to be probably Ooh, pulled forward southwest oh snipe. yep that's they're going for the comp snipe nice comp snipe Really punishing the sponge for going forward too far. However, the, these scorches are going to take that out, and the mace is going to. Well, the mace is going to have no, no problem mind. with the scorches. Those they're so they're so riot heavy. Yeah, it's 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 a bit of a risk building a recon commander if you're not constantly watching it. He had radar on that. He should have known some two units moving that slowly would be maces, which can power down a commander. So you saw how they actually. I think commander. the sponge is focusing on the northeast instead. And yeah. there is a nice dagger raid right there. Not doing a whole lot of damage, though, but is able to get... Okay, now it's getting past the defenses. There we go. Now it's going to be able to deal some damage. Forcing oh, the sponge are, back and distracting there, there are laser towers spread out, so it, it's going to get thwarted eventually. It is. However, and as I was saying with the... I was going to say the solar collectors, I was thinking that Magman would build them going southwest from the eastern base and then build a pylon on both sides of that hill or on top of the hill to connect the two, connect the south five metal and the east five metal. And that would be when pounds um, be built. As long as he has, if you if his metal is 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 um, yeah. Sorry, we're seeing um maces in the middle of the map right now, taking out the the laser towers, which is quite quite good. Um, 
taking no losses other than mm -hmm. a bit of repair damage. But um, if he has built and an equal number of solar collectors on um, each of the high value metal extractors, he doesn't actually need to um, uh, connect them. I mean, there's, there's no advantage to doing so. Oh, okay, fair enough. Anyway, it doesn't matter but you though. You see an air switch now, yeah, you can see he's, nice he's, he's, he's really powering ahead. Magman's playing this excellent. He's taken two choke points between these hills. When he's playing versus a vehicle player, this is really good. I mean, well, not just that. Yeah, he, it, it, he's, he's naked expanding behind it. He's taking the, the choke point around the far right side. He's put three laser towers in that. I mean, there's an open point where the geothermal power plant is along the river where the enemy could get through, but that's traveling sort of. It's not. A, it's smart because it's not a direction most players choose to go. No, and so I think he's, got most, he's got most things locked down. And actually, it's kind of funny because the sponge is being hinted towards that direction as Magman is going along that exact same avenue. Mm. But I don't think it's going to matter. I mean, the sponge, if it, they go for a counterattack, they're in a prime position to do so. But even then, Magman could pretty easily build some defenses. And yeah, I think the fact that Magman went for those high value mechs and the sponge did not punish them for it. I mean, at this point, Magman has 10 metal out. The overdrive isn't even pushing through yet. Magman's actually. Magman's stalling on energy. Once this fusion reactor is done, it will be a bit better, but right now, Magman is stalling hard on energy. Magman should really consider um, a, a geothermal power plant, because uh, they're really you know, one of the most efficient sources of energy. Yeah, especially being but, that there um, are ravens coming in from the sponge, and that's going to try to punish everything. This might swing it back in the sponge's favor. They're, gonna, they're scouting it out, they see the fusion, they see the metal extractors, they see the commander, they're going to go for the commander first, which is not a bad idea, that's the all of... That's all the build power in that area, apart from the caretaker. Everything that can build new stuff, that's gone. However, yeah, you also see he has fighters up, which are harassing the enemy. Um, uh, yeah, that is uh, enemy bombers. That is nice to see. And the raid over here in the north. Oh, we actually totally missed the raid at the same time. That was a little bad timing there, I suppose. Didn't do much though. Pretty much everything died inside of mag inside of the sponge's base, giving the sponge a massive advantage on that. And they can reclaim to parity right now. Yeah, I think um, what really put this game in Magman's favor is um, the the strong push he did with his commander up the side to putting those defenses in the two choke points. While the sponge went for the middle of the map, the open middle of the map, where well, yeah. he's not really taking a choke point and he wasn't really securing extra metal extractor, and he exposed his, um, exposed his commander it. as well we and lost it. So one yeah, one that just the, put him two behind. The first one one today. <laughs> I think we can expect the sponge to go hovercraft next game because I think he's feeling like um, he's a bit weak against the enemy hovercraft and that he's he, he doesn't have a good counter to it. So yeah, yeah, I yeah I could see that. I just think that Magman and that that was a risk, but it paid off, and I think that was kind of the problem. Is the sponge kind of let it? I mean, part of it was the fact that light vehicles are a bit tricky in trying to deal with that sort of thing. I mean. Punishing such a well-defended metal extractor. The Lotus is right there, the solar collection around. There are two Lotuses already, and the commander was there at the time at the start. That would have been hard to punish. I think it's more the fact that the Eastern metal extractor wasn't punished when it was first built. And the sponge knew it was being built. I think that would have probably made a difference. Yeah. Now, also, the sponge didn't go for the Western one. Didn't try to go, okay, well, I'm going to just match you mechs from X. Like, no, just went for the center and didn't really push much from there. Because this map does not make the center work, does it? Like, the center really doesn't give you that position that lets you sweep around easily. Choke yeah, it's a there. bigger map. Um, it, it's There's more choke points at other points, uh, other areas. So, yeah, you're doing a, a typical thing where you go travel to the center, you build a defensive position, and then you swing left and right from there. You get your radar tower there, so you get, have excellent coverage. And... Yeah, it just didn't work as well as, as taking the choke points and taking the high-value metal extractors did for Magman. Yes, this this map, I, I like it. <laughs> I haven't seen it before, but it's interesting. I kind of hope we see it a bit more. Mm. It seems like a pretty good compromise between the comic catcher style gameplay and a more choke point heavy style gameplay that I tend to prefer, or at least I'm more used to. Anyway, we're moving on to game three, which looks like it's... I don't know what map it's going to be on. No, no, it hasn't been chosen yet. This bunch has not yet chosen the map. I don't know why. Sponge, choose your map. Oh yeah, Floris is pointing out in the chat that this Sponge's commander movement, that's what he's blaming. Because, yeah, that, that was pushed too far forward. That really was way too aggressive for what it's worth. He could have jumped back with the, um, uh... 
with the commander because it was a recon, but he wasn't paying enough attention. Yeah. With the sponges when it got sniped by the mace. That's kind of unfortunate. It looks like we are on to CCR. The sponge figuring they can just win the macro game. Which, well, actually, I don't know. I mean, Magman's problem is tunnel vision, but given the size of the map, I don't think Magman's going to have the chance to actually get that tunnel. Oh, well, okay, they might. They might end up with the the initial raiders. That's where it's going to come down to. If anything. Oh, hey, someone prettified this map. Uh, yeah, this is the um, the noisy, confusing version with uh, which is harder to see units on. <laughs> This oh, is a uh, yeah. version. I was thinking more of the way that the mixes were kind of set. Although the lip, yeah, the lip's actually just normal mapping. That's pretty cool. Or possibly just light mapped. I'm not quite sure if it's normal mapped. But yeah, pretty fine version. Which H64 compression is probably going to eat up and tear apart. We'll see. Hopefully it doesn't macro block too much. So Magman going for early heavy tank. Well, sheesh, if there was one if there's one factory that punishes tunnel vision, there it is. On the other hand, the sponge not yet chosen their start yet. Not sure what they're going for. The one true 1v1 map that the sponge says, what? I think the what the sponge just feels comfortable here. <laughs> Well, I could see that. Like I said, the sponge is probably thinking they have better macro than Magman. I mean, so far, that last game didn't... That last game threw a bit of confusion in there, but I think the sponge is still confident. And going for hovers. Yeah, as you said. Yeah, the sponge announced that he was going to go for hovers. Said, you know, hey, I've lost to hovers a couple of times, and I'm gonna, just going to go hovers myself this time. And I think Magman is expecting this and thinking he can beat it with tanks. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if he's right. <laughs> well, I think that Magman... It's going to be coming down a lot to how well Magman can retreat. I mean, when it comes to tanks, that's that's what it is. Especially early on. Those first two Kodachis, not just one, two, from Magman are going to be key. If, if those live, then it's good. If those die, then Magman basically has a very uphill struggle in order to win this game. Yeah, I think he thinks it with, feels with the Kodachis, uh, with their AoE splash and their high alpha, which mirrors and really overdoes, you know, does better than uh, the daggers. daggers. Yeah, um, that he can sort of stop the critical mass as well as raid. It's not a but bad he idea. Keep them alive. Yeah, that's nice. it's not a bad to, idea to he do needs that. To but... Beat him on micro, I think. Uh, yeah, we'll see though. I mean, at this point. Magman, Sponge are getting their early rating going. The Sponge, five daggers coming in. That's a very strong opening force. And Magman going in the exact wrong direction, too. So Magman's going to have to really buy themselves a lot of time. And unfortunately, that Kodachi going in the absolute worst spot in between all of the daggers, giving them all three shots. Two He's of the daggers. Giving ah. them, uh... Two of the daggers might go down. One of them. No, uh... not even. Not. No, never mind. The Lotus will take them out, but still. That was. That was not efficient. And now Magman realizes what's happened. But that was that was bad. However, Magman yeah. will have a good angle. That's the one good thing. Magman will basically hit this hit the quill right here, go behind, hit the metal extractor, and won't be going frontal. All the defenses yeah. the, the commander's up at the front, so at least that way Magman has some advantage. Some way of getting in there. I think that um Yeah, it's coming in now. I think that it's really high macro, I mean, high micro requirements to be using Kodachis. Uh, I mean, because you can do stuff like you can do a uh, set target at the ground to leave a fire trail behind you as you retreat. And like mm. these, these sort of ridiculously high micro tricks to like lead ahead of someone, ahead of a pack to specifically hit them that, that way in order to make them walk through the fire. And this, the, also, these are the tr tricks. He's doing, he's doing some good efforts here. Um, taking out the, the quill and the um, metal extractors in the north. That quill was a big drop, though. Actually, that, that was really worth taking out. That's going to slow the sponge's expansion Definitely. efforts down. That gives Magman quite a lot of room to breathe. And that's Magman really is naked expanding as well. So, I mean, you got to realize that it, it, since he's naked expanding, he's, he's, he's doing it pretty rapidly. Although, I, mean, I suppose the sponge is pretty much naked no, the sponge, expanding too. The sponge was totally naked. 
but both players Magman are naked expanding. Been punished for naked expanding yet? That's the point. I mean, Magman worked well to punish him, and he's no, oh, he's about to run into the commander though. That could be. Oh no, he's dodging around. No, he's he's getting caught. Yeah, the caught actually is not. To... Oh well, it gets rid of one of them, but that's not good enough. It's not really enough. Yeah. Still, that. Yeah, at least it got rid of some of these. I don't know. I think a nice swing around the other side, like the other side of this big crater here, that might have been worth it because then all the. All the hovers went out of position. That would have been a nice open spot. Nothing there. But at this point, the sponge for the counterattack. And will be able to punish pretty effectively as well. It gets rid of one metal extract for free. Panthers yeah, out of Mag position. Yeah, Panthers are out of... Mag Magman's Panthers. Way out of position. Yeah. Actually, yeah. one of them stuck in a crater. <laughs> While Magman's <laughs> morphed commander, way out of position once again. The sponge doing a much better job punishing. The Panthers are getting back into position, but there, I think there's a critical mass of daggers here. Yeah, there's a critical yeah. mass, alright. I think that if he could blunder into some defenses here, which um, could um, uh, give Magman... Yeah, it is killing okay, most of these. He's going to lose oh, a Panther hit, he's going to stun ouch. them. Yeah, That was a good Panther tick. Not perfect, yeah. but it works. There goes... Um, I think that really wipes out um, the Sponge's military advantage at this point. And Magman is still naked expanding with his commander. He's morphing it now, which will make it really difficult to snipe. Um, mm. If he can naked expand and then put some defenses in front of it, this could work, but he is down to uh, five maxes at this point. Um, That's so, a big deal. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, it's fair because the sponge doesn't have much more, so they're mostly equal. And losing that big military, I mean, to be fair, the Kodachis, even though it looked like he didn't lose much, you see a big uh, attack of um, daggers like that, and you see him losing them all in the middle of the base, it looks much more significant. But losing the two Kodachis and the Panthers, I, I'd say in almost all respects, they're pretty much in parity now. Yep, and the, the stats show that too. The sponge is at 21 to 20 for metal, and Magman's half thousand... Actually, Magman's entire military advantage could be explained away by the commander morph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> sometimes I always... I don't have the stats myself, so I sometimes wonder whether, when I'm saying this, whether I'm completely wrong. Oh, yeah, you should no, use the no. player list. That has the stats yeah. on it. Yeah. But, um... I, I mean, you're using a player it, list, right? I, I, just haven't, I just haven't enabled it yet. Oh, but, um, okay. yeah, no, the expansion from the commander's found at this point. Um, but, no, he's pulling back because he's afraid of his own commander getting sniped by these Panthers. We'll see. No, it, it, it's probably uh. not going to work. He needed both commanders. Both commanders could have stunlocked the, 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 the recon comm quite easily. He's, he's pulled his, but it's managed both to cause him to pull. Mean. Both the Panthers could have stunned the recon commander. Yeah, yeah if, if he kept them alive. But, yeah, that's... Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it doesn't matter though. The daggers are just in position already, and that will finish he's, it. He's losing too many, too many, too many panthers. And, and this is the perfect, this is the perfect case where you need again critical mass of panthers. In that, in that, that stuns so many of the daggers. If he had have had another panther there, you know, there's nothing yeah, that the, the, the daggers could have done. Yeah. And you can see he's switching into planes now because he's like, I can't make this work. I'm past, it's past the point. He's, he's expanding fine. His economy is keeping up, but he feels like he's past the point where he can beat uh, the sponge's army with his own. And you can see this. Yeah. His commander is on a tear. He's morphing he's, again. Not only is he on a tear, the sponge has no knowledge of this. The sponge doesn't even, hasn't even scouted the eastern side of the map, not suspecting anything. So Magman's naked one, expanding for free. Yeah, he took out one metal extractor, but it, it, he saw the Panthers and pulled back, worrying that he, his commander would get smart, sniped. Which is fair, because if you stun like a recon commander, it's going down really fast. But he has a he has his own army up now. This is during the fact switch. During oh, the fact no. switch. Wait, wait, sponge. The sponge does oh, figure it out. Okay. Guesses it at least and does guess correctly, and that's going to take out everything. This, I think, will give the sponge the game. I know I call that a lot, but I think this will eventually. I think this is going to swing it. I think this is going to be the key deciding factor is the fact that Magman has just now lost about 10 metal per second for nothing. This is definitely huge. This is definitely enormous. I think that. Um, I think that the economy is actually way the more This is. The comp snipe is what? coming in, and the economy is not a parity. Magma is 19 medals, the sponge is 31. I don't think the comp snipe will work. Riot cannon with three auto repair modules. Oh, yeah, never mind. On a combat You're com. Right. <laughs> That's a lot more powerful than you think. In fact, I think... It, oh, here we go. Two, two panthers coming in, doing some damage. I think, honestly, if he had gone for the comp snipe, he would have... Oh, might have lost. But the panthers Perhaps. are being surrounded. But They're the sponge did down. not... The sponge did not make yeah. that mistake, and the panther... Ah, nice, nice stuns on there, but not enough. That's no follow-up. That's not doing nearly enough. I think that um, Magman should have just made a, a few laser towers there. I don't know if it would have really slowed down that many. 
daggers. So I guess time. I guess he made the right decision. He needs to turn that small advantage he had, that brief advantage, because he was ahead in the economy as far as I could tell while he was doing that. But he needs to turn that into a unit advantage and to re-expand and take that territory again so that he can he can um he has a brief window here where he's behind in the economy where he needs to rebuild that and take advantage of his air. I don't know if it's gonna work though. The Panther's going down one by one and the sponge going for quite a powerful counterattack. These ravens are about the only hope that exists. And Magman not even focused on the commander at all. The commander not actually going through with that metal construction right now. That it's just idle. Or no, it's not idle, it's going for an attack. And it's getting attacked as well by the sponge. Bombers coming in for the sponge, going for Magman's commander, and it won't die in the first run, but definitely the second one, if there's a second one that comes in. <laughs> the auto repair might regenerate between between runs. It depends on at this point. He's gonna morph yeah, to the next it's level. Not enough. Uh yeah, probably not. I think it's that gonna, um, it'll save it for you know a couple extra bombers, but it's not he gonna could save it for borrow the entire himself. Volley. He has enough time right now to borrow himself, but I'm not sure he has the metal to do that. No. Um, and you can see the sponge is oh, yeah. slipping out with the uh, daggers repair. as well. Well, that really cuts down Magman's metal, and it's just... At this point, Magman does have, I don't know, five auto repair modules, but even then, not enough. Even with the five auto repair modules, it's still... Yep. Actually, you know what? No, that's... No, that's not enough. There it goes. Goes down, and with that, I think Magman's probably figured there's not much left. Five auto repair modules is frankly too much. He could afford either more hit points there or longer range. Mm -hmm. With maybe some more damage or longer range, you might have been able to shoot down the bombers. Well, that was damage oh, enough. That was game three. And that was two one. That is it for the bronze match. Well done to M the sponge. Two one there. Although that was the first non two zero game this entire tournament, which a little embarrassing. We need more players, more people playing in the tournament, so we have more two ones early on. So we can cast it for longer. Hooray! <laughs> hey. Well, that 20-player 20, that 20 tournament on July was actually pretty smooth, so I think it'd be fine. Although, admittedly, at this point, it's 6 o'clock and we're at the finals. And it just occurred to me that I've had my patio door open this entire time. I'm probably annoying the neighbors. Oops. Give me a sec. Yeah, I think that um, Google Fog is saying right now that um, he wants to play the sponge with the matchup with the tank. Um, uh... A hover matchup later on, so it'd be interesting to see that um, what Google Frog has in plan, because I can expect Failthus to be playing. Uh, I can really expect to fail fail Thus to be playing um, uh, the same hover thing. He's been saying that hovers are still too strong, because in the last one versus one uh, tournament, hovercraft did dominate and they were nerfed. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see what Google Frog brings. I think he probably there's a chance. Given that he just said he wants to play Sponge with the matchup, mm. presumably Sponge playing um, uh, Hovercraft and uh, Failthus. Uh, uh, you mean Failthus playing Hovercraft and Google Frog playing tanks? Uh, oh. Google Frog wants to play Sponge, but I expect yeah, oh. I expect I expect Google Frog to bring out tanks at some point if he thinks it's a strong matchup against uh, mm -hmm. against Failthus. But yeah.